Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. If not, welcome back and thank you for supporting me. I'm Coretta. In today's video, I will be creating the Chapstick Purse Party Favor. I purchased this template from one of my favorites, Andrina's Creation. So without further ado, let's get started. The supplies that you will need for this project is glue. I am using Andrina's Creation, AK Crafting Glue, and you can order this from her website. I have cardstock of my choice. I have white. I have all the shades of purple, and I have purple foil cardstock that I purchased from Michaels. The white cardstock I used for printing. You will also need, if you would like to emboss your chapstick purse, you will need a embossing machine. I have this Sizzik Big Shot embossing machine that I purchased from Michaels. I used the 60% off coupon to purchase it. And I have my embossing folder that I purchased from Amazon. I will leave the link to all of these items in the description box below. To make the chapstick purse, you will need to go to andrinascreation.com to purchase and download the template to your computer. Once you purchase and download the folder, you will go to your folder, your file explorer. The file will download as a zip folder, so you will need to unzip it. Once you unzip the folder, you can upload the template into Cricut Design Space. So I've already unzipped my folder. So once the folder is unzipped, we will, let's take a look and see what's inside. So once the folder is unzipped, you will see in the unzipped folder that there are three file, there are three file formats in here. The first one is, a Silhouette Studio file. The second one is a Microsoft Edge file, which is the SVG format. And then you have a JPEG file, which is the measurements. For this tutorial, I will be using the measurement file and the SVG file. So now I'm going to upload the template into Cricut Design Space. To upload, the file into Cricut Design Space, you will go to Upload, Upload Image, you will go to Browse, you will browse to where your file is located, and select the file that you want to upload, and select Open. The file will come in as a cut file, so you would not so the cut file the cut image file would be selected you would hit upload so once uploaded on your recent uploads you will select your file and then in the bottom right you would hit add to canvas the template will upload into Cricut Design Space but not in the size that you need in order to create the purse. As you can see, the file is huge. So to size the cut file properly, you will need to reference the measurement JPEG. So you can print the JPEG out or you can open it and flip back and forth between the um, window and the canvas. For this tutorial and for this purpose only, I am going to add the JPEG file to the canvas so that I can have it up for reference and I don't have to flip back and forth so that we can see the, the measurements that is needed to um, size the pieces correctly. So I'm just um, 
uploading it so that again I don't have to flip back and forth between the pieces here so we're gonna leave this over here in the corner for reference now let's take a look at the cut files I'm gonna zoom out here a little bit so we can take a look I'm gonna go back up more. so as you can see there are some files with dotted lines on them. These dotted lines are the score lines. Cricut will cut these lines as perforated lines so that you can fold the cardstock. To cut the files with the score line, I must first attach the score lines to the cut file. So to attach the score lines, you will need to first make sure your your files are selected go up to the top right toolbar menu and select ungroup then you will select the file the cut files with the score marks each individually and you will go to the bottom right hand side and select attach and I will do the same thing for the white piece. I'm going to select the, the white piece and the score lines and I'm going to select attach. So all the score lines have been attached. So now we can size them according to the measurements provided. Remember when sizing the file, you should always have your proportion locked. Okay, so I'm going to move over a little bit scroll up a little bit and we're going to take this first piece is the pink piece so this pink piece is the base layer and it should be sized that 3.5 inches in width and 8.067 in height so we're going to size this piece this piece is the main layer and can be cut with any color cardstock of your choice so let's size it to 3.5 inches in width. The proportion is locked and we hit enter. And it's and it proportionately sized to zero to 8.067 in height. So that's correct. Then you have this white layer here. The white piece is the piece that is going to hold the chapstick. This piece is used to write your message or your sentiment for your event. And it is placed on the inside of your base layer. According to the instructions and the measurements per, or the measurements provided, this piece should be sized at 3.25 in width and 5.510 in height. So we're going to size it. The width should be 3.25 in width. My proportion is locked and I'm going to hit enter and it proportionately sized to 5.510 in height. So that is correct as well. So then you have these green pieces here. Put that right there. Oops, back up. So then, let's try this again. You have these green pieces here. Now, these green pieces are the first layer. These pieces can be cut using metallic cardstock or a glitter cardstock. And these should be sized according to the measurements. The pieces with the handles should be sized at 3.440 in width and 3.475 in height. And so, you don't want to size them together. You want to size them individually. So we're going to size the first piece to 3.440 in width. Hit enter and the height is 3.475. And that would be correct. And then you're going to size the second one to the same 3.440 in width. And the height should be 3.475. This small piece here should be sized at 
1.133 in width and 0 0.76 in height. And so we're going to change the width to 1.133 in width. And we're going to hit enter. And the size did not proportionately change. It changed to 6. Point zero point six four eight, and according to the measurements, it should be zero point seven six one. And so we're going to unlock the proportion, and we're going to fix the height on this piece, zero point seven six one, and we're going to hit enter. And so now we have the green piece, the green piece size to the correct size as well so we're going to move these pieces out the way so then we have our purple pieces so we're going to move the purple pieces up here over here let's put them right here so we have our purple pieces here and according to the um according to the instructions the purple pieces are the second layer to the purse. These pieces can be cut using a decorative cardstock. You can also emboss this layer with an embosser machine using any color cardstock of your choice. The purple pieces with the handles should be 3.30 in width and 3.335 in height. And so we're going to size the pieces with the handle accordingly. So we have 3.330. We're going to make sure our proportion is locked and we're going to hit enter. And it's sized to 3. Point, hold on. The width is wrong. I'm sorry, I typed it in wrong. It should be 3.30, enter. And so then the height size to 3.335 as per the instructions. The second one, we're gonna size it to 3.30 and we're gonna hit enter. And it also sized to 3.335 in height according to the instructions. You have the small piece here and according to the instructions, it should be 1.184 in width and 0 0.621 in height. And so we're going to size it to those measurements. 1.184 in width, hit enter, and it proportionately sized to 0 0.621. And then we have our bow. According to the instructions, the bow should be 2.207 and the height should be 1.570. And we're going to size this piece as well. So I put 2.207 and width, I hit enter and it size to 1.571. I'm a little finicky, so I want to change that last digit to zero. So I'm going to unlock my proportions and I'm going to click and I'm going to change the last digit to zero and hit enter. May not make a big difference, but just makes me feel more comfortable. With all the pieces size, you can cut it. You can cut your purse out now using the cardstock colors of your choice. But if you wanted to add a decorative background, you can also do that now. So to add a decorative background, you can search Google for a background that you, of your choice or you can purchase one from where you would like to purchase it and then save it to your computer. Once um, you've saved the background to your computer, you would need to load the pattern to your computer in order for you to use it. So to load the pattern to your computer, you would go to upload, you would select pattern fill, and you would select upload pattern. 
You will browse. You will browse to where you saved your pattern. And I've already saved mine to my computer. Select open. The print then cut pattern is selected and then you would hit upload. Now, once you hit upload, it automatically goes to your pattern images. Once your image has gone to the pattern image, the pattern images to get back to your canvas, you would just select upload and it'll take you back to your canvas. Now, I've saved the pattern to my pattern field images, and now I want to add a pattern to my second layer. And my second layer is the purple pieces over here. So, in order to add the pattern to this layer, I am going to select them all, and I'm going to go to the top menu bar and I'm going to select duplicate. And I'm duplicating these pieces just in case I mess up. I will have the original pieces here so that I can start over if I have to. And so I'm finished with the measurements. So I am going to hide them from the screen right now. And I am just going to work on my pattern pieces. So again, this is the second layer. So this is the part of the purse that you will see. And I want to add a pattern to these pieces. So the first thing I need to do is select, select my pieces. I'm going to go to operation and I'm going to select print, then cut. Then I'm going to select the color and I'm going to change the color to pattern and here in the pattern you will see that there are a bunch of preloaded patterns here for you to select from or you can you know use the one that you so you can use that one or you can use the one that you've uploaded and i think that this is the one so i'm going to select the pattern that i want to upload to use for my purse. Now, once you selected your pattern, then there is another element of this pattern thing that you want to um, that you want to take a look at because, as you can see here, we have like the lines the of the pattern is kind of like off. You can see where the paper starts to repeat itself. And so to correct that, we are going to go to edit pattern. So we're gonna select edit pattern. And when we select edit pattern, we see, we see first the scale option. And with this scale option, you can see that this will help you to um, to size your pattern to big or small, you can use the, you can use the, the scale thing, um, up or down, or you can use the slider bar to slide your pattern down. So I am going to slide it just so it makes a little bit of sense for me here. I don't want it too big because then you won't be able to see the details, but I'm going to slide it that way. Here you have your horizontal or vertical, and this moves the pattern left or right or up or down. So this is left or right, and this is up or down. Then you have your rotate option where you can rotate at an angle or flip it vertically or horizontal. For this tutorial, I'm only going to scale my image to my liking. So I am going to take a look and see what my scale has done and I'll come back. So here I'm going to scale this piece here. Let me see, because I can't see it. So 
So I'm going to move it over so I can try to see the pattern when it comes up and I still can't see it. So we're going to have to go off of the picture. So I'm going to scale this pattern to my liking. I don't like it so big. Maybe I'll do something like that. It's a little bit more decorative with the lines. It kind of makes sense to me. So I'm going to go with that. And then I'm going to do the same thing for this piece here. I'm going to edit the pattern. And I'm going to put it kind of the same way. And I like that. And then I have this little piece here that the pattern seems to be a tad bit too small. So I'm going to edit that as well. I'm going to just make that a little bit bigger so it makes a little bit of sense. I am going to move that horizontally so that the line from the pattern is kind of in the middle. And then I am good with that. So now I have added the pattern to my pieces. So the next thing I want to do is I want to add some text to the inside of my white piece. So to add text to the inside of my white piece, I am going to kind of move it out so I can have some room to work with. I'm gonna select the text icon on the left menu bar, and I am going to type my text, and it's gonna say, thank you for coming. Period. Space. You are the bomb. And then I'm going to select the font that I want to add. And I'm going to select, I only want to see my system fonts. And then I'm going to use, no, let's use Magnolia. Magnolia Sky. No, I don't like that one either. Um, what's another good font? Let's try to search for a good font. System font. Let's use Baby Child. That seems decent. But this font right here, so... I'm going to kind of leave it like that but let's ungroup it because I don't like the way that looks so I'm going to delete this these right here I'm going to delete them because I don't like the way that looks and I'm going to insert text again and I'm going to type bomb with a exclamation point and I am going to change that back to something that you can read because you can't read it. So I don't like it, but I can live with it. <laughs> I just want to be able to read it. And for the purpose of this tutorial, I don't want to make it long. So I am going to leave it like that, group it all, let's see, sorry, group that back together, bring that down a little closer, and then I'm going to group that part back together, select them both, align them center, And then group them together again. Bring my white piece over and size that accordingly. Okay. 
So I have my words positioned where I want them. Now, so that Cricut doesn't cut out my words, I need to flatten them to the square, but not to the score lines. To do this, I would first detach the score lines by selecting the square and going to the bottom right and selecting detached. Next, I would select the square and go up to the top and select ungroup. Then I would select the white square, hold my shift key and select the words, and then I would flatten. Now don't be alarmed when you flatten the pieces, the lines disappear. No worries. The Cricut will still cut the lines even though you can't see them on the screen. So once I have flattened the pieces, the next thing I am going to do is I am going to select the square and the words and I am going to hit attach. So I've sized and designed all the pieces for the purse. Now I can cut everything out. So to cut everything out, we are going to go to, before we're gonna go to make it. So on the make it screen, so we're going to select on a mat because I have the Explore Air 2 and I'll be using the mat. So on the mat, we have, um, on this screen, we have our mats. So here we have the print and cut. We have the purple layer, the green layer, which is the bow. And then we have this mint green layer which is the second layer the first layer i'm sorry and then the pink layer which is the basic the base layer so on this screen there's no need to make any changes on this screen so we would select continue on this screen since we have this print and cut mat here we would select send to printer here on the send to printer screen, you want to make sure your printer that you want to print to is selected. You want to turn off your bleed and turn on your system dialog. And then you would hit print. The system dialog box will open and you would select the printer that you are going to be printing from and you would select your preferences. You will make sure that on your preferences, you have present presentation matte paper selected and your print quality should be at best. Now, if you are comfortable with your print settings, you do not need to turn on your system dialog box. You can just print. Me, I wanna make sure that everything is what it's supposed to be so that I don't have to print again. So once I do that, I'm gonna hit okay. And then I'm gonna select print. So once my images are printed, I am going to cut everything out and I'll be back when I have everything already cut out. So I have everything cut out and I have cut out two versions of the chapstick purse that I will be showing you how to assemble. The first one is the print then cut version. That I'm and then there is the embossing. The second version is an embossing um a version that I am going to emboss. So, I'm going to move the embossing layers out of the way. And I will show you how to assemble that one later. And then I'll show you now how to assemble the print then cut one. Now, the first thing that you want to do is you want to fold all of your pieces on the score lines. So you want to fold it on all of the score lines. Let me see. 
get that out the way. Then we're gonna fold this on the score lines. Oops, sorry. Out of the camera. Fold this on the score lines on this side. And then we're going to fold those pieces up and fold those pieces up. And then we're gonna push this piece up here. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to attach this piece to the base layer. So we're going to attach the message to the base layer. And when we glue the base layer down, we want to make sure that we don't glue these flaps here, this flap here, and this flap here. So we're going to glue the piece down ensuring that we don't glue down the pieces that hold the chapstick. So I've glued the message to the inside of the purse, making sure that I did not glue down the pieces that would hold the chapstick in place. The next thing you wanna do is you're going to flip your purse over, make sure those pieces are down, and we're going to glue our First layer. So you would glue a layer here, a layer here, and you would glue a layer here, like that. So here we have our first layer glued down to the base of our chapstick purse. And next we're going to glue down the second layer, which is the decorative layer. We are going to glue that piece down like that. So the pieces go like that. So here is the chapstick purse, the print and cut version glued together. And so you would just fold it up like so. Bring this piece through here. Oh, sorry. One more time. This is the purse completely assembled. You would fold it up, push this piece through here, and then you would push that down and it would sit, well, should sit <laughs> like that. And you would add your chapstick like so. So I've already designed the chapstick and you would just sit it in here in front of that piece there and in front of that piece right there so that now it, you just make sure that it doesn't lose, the chapstick doesn't fall out. And again, you just close it like that and then it sits like that. So, that is the completed print then cut version. So now I am going to do the embossing folder. I mean, I'm sorry, the embossing version. I will assemble the embossing version in the same way that I assembled the print then cut one. So I'm just gonna show you how I would emboss the second layer. So I have the second chapstick purse halfway assembled. I have the first layer glued to the base. I also have the message glued to the inside of the base. And so now I just have to emboss the, the, the second layer. And I am going to show you how I emboss these pieces. So to emboss your last layer, you will need a embossing machine. Here I have the 66 Big Shot that I purchased from Michaels. You can also get this from Amazon. You have your plates that come with the machine. So you have the plates that come with the machine and you will need an embossing folder. And you would purchase this embossing folder um, separately from the machine. You can get them from your local craft store or you can get them from Amazon. 
and I got this one from Amazon. So, <clears throat> excuse me, to emboss your second layer, you would take your folder and you would place your piece inside the folder, lining it up, making sure that it's straight, and you would close the folder. You would take the folder and put it in between the plates here. And then let's make sure that that's straight. Then you would take the plates and put it in the machine and you would run it. You would run it through the machine like so. And then I'm just going to run it back so I can get it back. And then after you finish, you would take it, take the folder out between the plates, and you would have your embossed layer. So here's your embossed layer. So now... I am going to finish embossing the other pieces and I will come back when I finish. So I have all the pieces embossed. And so after you emboss your pieces, you would just lay them down. You would glue them down like this. So that's how you would glue your last layer to your chapstick purse. So I'm all done assembling the chapstick purses. I have the print then cut version and I have the embossed version. I think they came out really great. These make really great party favors for any occasion. Now, during the assembly process, I added a chapstick. If you would like for me to do a tutorial on how to customize and label for a chapstick, leave me a comment down below and I'll get that video right out to you. All right, that's it. All right, guys, that's all for now. I hope that you are able to follow along with my process. If you like this video and would like to see more, please give it a thumbs up share it with your friends, and consider subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you can be notified every time I upload a video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I will respond back. Thank you for watching and see you in my next video.